and here we go. This is 20% off on uh, Thursday, 6 p.m. Denmark Tam, the 21st of March, 2019. And I got off to a, an early start here tonight because of all the time zone changes and just confusion. I, I'm i easily confused. You're welcome, Vinny. And uh, we're going to say hey to Grimder for putting us out there in the Internet worlds for everybody to hear all our genius stuff that we say on the radio. And uh, I'm going to say hi to everybody in the room. We, who we got? We got bots and bodies tonight. Barman. Grimner Moose Girl. Probably at work, though. Miss Kate. Brackets DC. Anti. Asmo. Chow Sedoni. Graham Z. Probably at work, too. Whoa, these working people. Stay logged on. Uh, Ivy Don, CJ, Dread, Meister, Brow, Ponder, Gander, Rain, Rob, Works, Romes, Vanna, White, Vinny, White, Weather, Dork, Z, Beth, Z, Phantom, and well then, Beetle, Colfax, 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, Me, Frumpy, Gromit, Java, Doctor, Two, J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Kiss, Ponsa, Sock, Puppet, Tech, Man, Uno, and Van Meter out there in California. I read about you in a shower on the internet, you dirty girl. Anyway, that that's the the lineup in the Bots and Bodies department of RealLibertyMedia.com, where the most creative minds of the 20th century gather to share our vast, experienced. <laughs> and wisdom with the rest of the people. Well, whoever whoever catches all this stuff puts us everywhere, Grim, with his computer. I love you back. See you a bit. We still have little son, so the wife's taking the dog out while the son's up. So the whole thing worked out good for me. Maybe not for you, but 20% off is... And that's the project I wanted to do on my own. And I was going off on the the UN's getting their nose up into Venezuela really big right now. Oh, huge. I'm so time-challenged. Shit, I can't even read a clock, apparently. And I just got my time thing fixed. And I'm a grown-up and everything. And then I screw up and forget. No, it's, it's 8 o'clock, not 7 o'clock. Or whatever o'clock it was at the time. Whatever time it is now. Boy, I tell Cirque, I disavow your clock daily. And then she brings it back, or the internet brings it back. Something always brings it back. But the United Nations, well, they're not really known for all their uh, good work amongst the people. Unless you're really indoctrinated and tied to state by the, you know, nuts, or boobs, or toes, you know, something down there in the Southland is holding you, and you can't escape it. Well, anyway, the UN's given up the United States now, and it's getting kind of strange. They're being very open about the deceptions that are taking place to overthrow the sitting government, and there were taking it a little bit further now whether venezuela is a socialist or a not a socialist country i don't really care that <laughs> that doesn't interest me what interests me is the military <laughs> from the country i'm from wants to go in there and remove the guy that's sitting in power and replace him now the links i've been seeing about the people that live in Venezuela, they don't want the new guy. They want the guy they got. So, and it it's not like the <laughs> it's not like the press would lie to us, is it? I mean, isn't everything that we read about America true? Every every 
detail. <sighs> anyway, so according to the newspaper and the American government, one thing's going on. Now, according to the people that are on video links and talking to the interviewers and the places you're looking at, there's a whole nother story. So somebody's lying. That much we know because we've got both stories. But <laughs> like usual, who, who's lying about what? I mean, lie to me for the greater good. I can take it. Let those interest rates stay low so that I can eat steak. I mean, <laughs> what are we doing? This is just ridiculous. Uh, to me, the current system and the shit people are all chasing after seems completely insane. Yesterday, it seemed like I was in a disagreement on the Real Liberty Media because of my stand on... Uh, the second rate shit we're fed to survive on. Ha ha ha. Uh, I don't know what else to call it. It's kind of a an insult to all of us, but the delivery of the electric creates waste, and the people that deliver it to us know that. They do this to make the most profit. And sadly... When you have a population of people who are chronically ill from all the shit they're eating and drinking and absorbing through their skin, well, it's kind of a lucrative business. I don't know how anybody in their right mind could say, I ain't going to do that. Give me one second here. Ah, there we go. Had a little thing going on on the computer here. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, Grimm's, Grimm's already on that. Uh, yeah, well, some people will say that about me, Grimm. Come on. I'm telling people the exact opposite of what they want to hear in the long run, for the most of it. The, the percentage, the higher percentage of the population they want to be coddled and twaddled oh they want to be hugged and rubbed lotioned and motioned and taken out to dinner and put to bed but that's not life that's not how life really is but that's what they want i even see either i read something or i saw a link about people in some state in america want jail time for those who refuse to call people by their proper him, her, she, shit, they name. Whatever the hell that's all about. I mean, what are they trying to do? Make it so people go out in public and don't speak to each other anymore. Because you could end up in jail for calling her a he... Or him or her. Or whatever. Uh, I don't have my list. Because we had like. There's 28 genders. and Wow. We've just been had by these science people. Science people and the media. Have gotten together. And just. They just fuck the dog. <laughs> people believe the most insane things. And they justify the insane things. That they believe. On the government said so. Well, how many times does a government lie before a government is a liar? <laughs> I think one's enough, you know, for me. Maybe the rest of you people are all forgiving and you go, oh, well, it's just a government. What can you expect from them? The representation of we, the people. I mean, hey, who are they anyway? Just a bunch of lawyers and doctors i don't see any i don't think the modern common day guy he's got no representation anywhere all we got now we're left stuck left with these these donald trumps and nancy pelosi's hillary clinton oh hey i saw jeb bush pitching uh somebody needs to run against trump 
guess Mr. Bush and Mr. Trump don't get along too good. I wonder why. Or is that just part of their, you know, game that they play? Because I wouldn't vote for these people. There's no reason to vote for any of them. They're worthless. Look at the results of what we have and go, yeah, I'm going to go with Donald Trump because, well, he knows how to handle a bankruptcy and America's in a huge one. Huge. It's bigger than big. (laughs) It's so big. There isn't even a word for what it is. It's so big. But we can hint around with things like gargantuan, monstrous, unsustainable. Oh, man. Hey, have you guys ever heard of that? Uns- what's that? Sustainable development shit. That's, isn't that the United Nations, though? See, so, I mean, I don't trust the UN. They back the wacky as shit. They want a lot of people dead. Here's America willing to go in and wipe out Venezuela for the cause and the UN doesn't want them to do it all of a sudden. And I don't get the shift. What What's stopping? What's so special about Venezuela? We must find out. We have to send somebody down. One of our crack team of experts on the Real Liberty Media should volunteer to fly down to Venezuela, huh, Vinny? And report back with the truth. All of it. You speak enough Espanoli to probably survive down in Venezuela, Vinny. I mean, hey, bunnies are bunnies, but this is huge. Yeah, just came up on the chat uh, for me. Uh, sure. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. And we're supposed to be a bunch of adults. And this is the part that catches me. And we're all supposed to know how to read and write and cipher and look at the world and make up your own mind about what you see. And all that's all fine and good until the minute you do it. Because the people that get the biggest grief are the ones that don't follow the golden rule, whatever the golden rule is. Uh, first, give me the Coke back. Oh, what Coke? Hmm. They're talking about Venezuela. I don't think Venezuela was all that big on coke. I thought it was Colombia. Might have been Venezuela for all I know. I'm not no big drug addict, brainiac. You got to talk to hands about all that stuff. He knows all their things. (laughs) Yeah, we ought to do a GoFundMe to send Vinny to Venezuela. And then he could be Venezuela for real. Yeah, it's funny, but it would take somebody like Vinny to go down there and actually get the truth out of people and find out what the fuck's going on. Because we get both sides <laughs> equal, 50-50. They're... This is strange. This is the weirdest I've ever seen this. Maybe uh, you guys are seeing something more than I am. You're more connected. You got your Facebook. You got your Twitter. And me, all I've got is a few mm, small chitter-chatter sites and computer. So, mm. And I don't use the, the Twitter and the, the, the Facebook. I use the YouTube. The YouTube still works for me. I like old movies. But, uh, and there's a few interesting things that you can find. But if you don't know... Like somebody new comes on and has something important to say. How do you know who they are to go look for them? You can't. So the, the internet is a trap in, a, in its own way. Because if, you'd have got, if you're not going to get word of mouth, then chances are, unless you're on one of the big platforms like Twitter and Facebook, well, then you're not going to see a lot of what's going on. But... Along with all the what's going on with so much crap. You know, a little brain like mine, well, I get confused really. As a, so I couldn't really take much of that Twitter. I, I lasted a little bit. But unfortunately, I think it just hit my boar bone real quickly. And had too much crap going on. How can you focus on anything? 
in a room that's like a hurricane. I'm not that smart. I can't do it, people. I don't even want to try to do that. So, I don't know what to make of this. I have uh, my prejudices to guide me, but I despise the UN and the US equally. So, to have one snitch the other one off about being uh, deceitful and encouraging a coup d'etat against a sitting government and it's bad for the people and all this. Wait a minute. I thought that's what the UN wanted. These, you can't make these people happy. They're impossible. The United Nations is the girlfriend that will not let you go. And, and things are changing, too. The relationship between the U.S. and the U.N. I wonder if that's just more theater I'm seeing. Who knows? Who knows who's behind the crap that you see on the Internet? And then we run around, oh, look what I found. Hmm. And then I wonder about it after I see it. <laughs> what was that? You know, Was that real? <laughs> or was that Oliver Stone making a movie from the grave? <laughs> Let's see what they got going on in the Real Liberty Media. We got Grimm, Van Meter, Venezuela, and Well Then, and they're battling out with J Dread on the real liberty media dot com chat. Some links going on. Oh no, Vinny doesn't have a current passport though. Isn't that a shame if he had one, he'd be the guy to send to Venezuela. We have our own very own honest reporter at the Real Liberty Media. We ought to rent him out. Maybe I can do that. I'll broker Vinny out for a percentage, and we'll use the percentage that I procure to fund um, Grimm's alcohol problem or whatever. See, if you don't have one, we'll raise money to fix it if you ever get one. And I think that should be perfectly legal. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Ah, oh, you had one once, huh? I'm on my second one now. At this point in my life, uh, but um, with the marriage thing, it changes all that crap. So, and if I wanted to go to Venezuela, then Cirque would go, no, I don't want to go to dumb old Venezuela. What do you want to do that for? And then, uh, see, so I'm staying in Denmark where it's peaceful and quiet, no coup d'etats, you know, no traffic, no crime. The only crime around here is the kids. Teenagers get bored and they do stupid shit, but it's it's more nonsense than crime. And the grown-ups are all a little disappointed in it. But... You never see blood on the streets or those, like, remember when they used to do the movies and have the tape around them where the body was on the floor? What the hell was all that about? Anyway, I think they had cameras. They could have took a picture. But, <laughs> you know, things have to be made, um, what's the right word for it, over the top for the public or the public isn't going to be interested in what you're telling them. I mean, damn, you have to really do some insane shit now to make a movie. If things don't blow up, explode, uh, turn into something besides what they were when you opened your eyes, you blink, there's something else, the movie's not, It's that's how it is now. Quick, 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 quick. Boom, 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 boom. No storylines, no, uh, no interesting details about the characters because it's all been done. We kind of... I think we're at the end of the road with film. I don't know what we're going to do. Put everything on YouTube that you can think of. And a few things I couldn't think of, but they were on YouTube anyway. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, Vinny's Wella Bolivar is ready to go. <laughs> and... Uh, Ah, uh, see, Van Meter, the people that are willing to do this and probably tell the, the the truth about what's going on can't leave to go there. They're prisoners in their freedom country, you know, where 
people are free to, uh, hmm. yeah, well, I guess we can save that for the dork table and I'll, I'll give any shit about being free. And of course, he's going to go, well, look at you. And I would say to him, hey, I'm the one that said I'm trading my freedom in to get married. What the hell more could he have said? I knew what I was doing. And I'm old enough now to where, oh, I think I get this. <laughs> it's not that damn hard. But there's no uh, state interfering in my business, you know, through the kids. Because me and Cirque don't need children. We got me and Cirque and animals. <laughs> Ah, what a life. Go figure. Anyway, let's see whose cousin is stirring the real liberty media dot com chat. Hmm. Vinny's talking about being flagged. Oh, if you tried to travel, I don't know how you can. How do you justify this shit? I mean, I hate every bit of this paperwork and. Show me your papers, and how much do you got, and where did it come from, and give me a thumbprint, give me a eye, what do you call it, uh, they've got those eye recognition software things now, I remember when I took the pictures for the freaking ID, they were claiming they had facial recognition software, taking your snappy little picture, you know, like, wow. Well, Okay, what is what is the point of all that when you think of how few people travel anywhere? Compared to the whole population, the amount of people that travel is not much. It's pretty small. Sounds like a lot, I guess. And if you're crowded in big enough places with, you know, like L.A. and New York and Atlanta, well, sure, it's going to be nasty and crowded and vicious and there's going to be criminals and coppers on every corner waiting to take your money from you. Must be kind of a drag to have crooks and crooks to deal with, though. Ah, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ah. ha, I was making a cop choke for Rob Works. I didn't, I haven't seen Rob say nothing. He must be chitter-chattering with old Donovan Meter, because... When she pops around, he usually loses interest in me quickly. And he had nose print. Yeah, the Jews have that new cock print. I heard Trump's working up a sperm tax. And it's driving those fuckers in West Hollywood figuring out, hey, is it going to be the giver or the receiver that gets taxed? Cha. But, eh. We're in huge trouble. We I've got this. They added another trillion since Trump's taken over. I think. I think they said in the last year, the national debt in the United States of America has gained another trillion dollars. And well, doesn't anybody get it that you can't pay the interest on a twenty-one trillion dollar debt? to ever do anything except pay interest on the debt as it continuously grows. It's like a mushroom. They ought to just call it the mushroom, huh? <laughs> well, because you know where they put it, it might as... Never mind. Bad jokes are us. Yeah, Vinny's all about going to Venezuela and becoming a on-the-ground reporter for the truth. I don't think the truth matters. I have come to that decision over many, many minutes of deep consideration. <laughs> I'm listening. Rob works. I wasn't sure. You're not chitter-chattering with the crowd on the Real Liberty Media. So I thought you might be off somewhere doing something else. Your Robertness. <laughs> But yeah, we've got all these uh, lies to deal with. I and mean, people tell us, hey, the government, they lie. The lawyers, they lie. The courts, they lie. Doctors, everybody, everybody is lying. Then why are you doing it? This hmm. Now, see, sir, sir gets me with, well, you got to remember you do it through me. Okay, well, that's two people doing one thing, 
and I'm not continuous. I'm not doing what I used to do now, so I'm not doing that no more. So I've taken myself physically out of the race, right? But then you got consumption and food intake and all these variables that when you, you know, write it down on paper, I'm still a lot less wasteful than I used to be when I was a functioning member of society. Now that I'm not a functioning member anymore, the damage I do, I do it with a partner and uh, all my daily things that I participate in physically, I do as little oil consumption as possible. And one of these days, I'm going to figure out what we can do about this electric crap. But I'm not smart enough to do it by myself. I need to find somebody else that knows more than I. And I've done that. The problem is the answer to this is what is considered intellectual property. So, uh, guess what? Stuck right in the back and the same thing that I wanted to escape is it takes money to create something so that people will use it well that's how we, we've all been trained you know because uh over the years if anybody small has designed or built or tried to peddle anything that was a competitor to the existing you know power structure they got gobbled up and hidden in a box underneath a trunk somewhere or some people just died mysteriously. Just boom, God got hit by lightning 47 times riding that car. Whoa, it was wild. You should have seen it. Too bad we didn't have a camera. And, uh, you know, weird, stupid things like of that nature have gone on and on and on. In politics, Clinton's well known for their dirty shit. And here we are, right? And all this, oh, Hillary's going to go to jail. With it. No, she's not. Well, how many times have I said that? Oh, and guess who's not in prison for anything? Hillary Clinton. I wonder if she's even still alive. Hmm. I mean, there's a 50-50 chance she is, but I've not seen much Hillary dog on the interwebs in the last year or so. Other people have claimed to have had Hillary sightings, but I missed them. And, you know, she is... <laughs> awesome and amazing and uh should have been the first female president of the united states but no uh oh hey there's another good piece of work that's coming up i i read that 11 states are joining hands together to boot the electoral college and put the numbers back where they belong instead of all this crap that we've had all these years they want the vote to matter <laughs> how many un how many past selections would get undone if you had to go by the numbers i wonder if anybody's ever been elected that really got elected you know because they've had the electoral college those intelligent people that you know speak on your behalf for you for the good of the country and stuff but mostly for finance and banking and you know bullshit as long as they got these little plastic cards and the internet they'll find ways to keep this dog going i can't figure out how they're doing it now but they do we're we're here we're doing it i and everybody knows everybody knows everybody knows and nothing changes just we know more shit but the shit that we know doesn't stop that shit from happening. Like my personal favorite this week. <laughs> what it rivaled stuff like, oh, inoculations. Jeez, that whole concept of when I found the internet, I found alternatives to the information I was given in the past. And I went, wow. Strikes me. That, for some reason, just the, the nature of this inoculation thing is just backwards, right? 
I can remember people all my childhood growing up life telling me, stay away from the heroin and the needles. Oh, those are bad, bad things. Oh, they will kill you. But here they are. They're giving two-month-old babies injections with who knows what. And that's okay because the government said they should do it. And the, hmm, who is it? The MA? <laughs> the CDC? Some alphabet soup group from uh, the states of perfection will set you straight, baby. Get you right because you're all broken. And you need to be forced to do things for the good of all. Huh. Okay, well, so far everything that's ever been for the good of all has always ended in a massacre of somebody. Some people somewhere always seem to get the shit end of the stick on that. And time after time we just keep thinking, well, maybe next time they won't lie to us. Or, well, maybe there's a world full of people out there that are so indoctrinated and blind and living in a bubble that they can't recognize simple things like sticking a needle into a baby for any reason at all is just insane. That's a baby. You're crazy. But here we are because, you know, you take your dog to the vet and they give them inoculations. And I say, yeah, but that's a dog. <laughs> You know, it ain't me. I ain't getting no damn inoculation. That's why the dog's getting the inoculation. But when you're a grown-up and you say that about your kid, <laughs> probably ain't going to sound so good in front of the doctor. Well, unless you ask the doctor, hey, well, you know what? Let's see how well this works. Bend over there, Dr. Charlie, and let's give you an inoculation and see how you like it. And I think a lot of these people, they... They claim, <laughs> they claim to know things because they have to. You know, your when your whole reality would collapse, then you you got to live in the lie. The lie is easier than the reality of truth. Wow, because yeah, they've got <laughs> they have laws preventing us from suing them for inoculating us and shit goes bad they go well we better give them a bone so back in the 80s they started this i don't know thing whatever the law thing is called to help people recover you know financially from the wounds they incurred by the people giving their kids shots I don't know how the money helps, but these people managed to get like $4 billion worth of settlements since 1988. Now, I wonder how that compares to the sales of these inoculations uh, over the course of 1988 to present. Or is it one more time we're just being lied to about the numbers or... Hmm. How do you even find this stuff out? Because I'm to the point where I don't trust anything I'm seeing or reading on or anything. It's all crazy. No matter what I want to find, I can find it. So hmm. we've gotten ourselves into a bit of a hole here hmm. with a lot of you know, immature people that they don't know how to progress beyond where they're at. You know, they... I think we've been conditioned to believe at some some level uh, that wherever you are, there's like a, a behavior for certain ages or there's certain accomplishments or achievements. You must do these things by the time you are this old, blah, 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 blah. And I'm trying to break that. I've got some real good uh, <laughs> people to see have done it before me. They've done things and started them at older ages than I'm at now. And spent a few years learning how to do something and became good at it. Very good at it. So I think it's as long as you keep your mind sharp and you you know you don't s just sit and rot. Got to stay a little physical. Be able to walk around and 
lift this and move that or life would be a drag. I think like Java found out when he got his knee replaced and was checking up on him today. It's been about uh, four weeks he's been on this. So I asked him about the the second one. He's going to have them both done. But he said, well, maybe two or three months. Two months is pushing it. And yeah, I can understand that. But at least he got it done. He's got the first one done. He knows what he's going to go through. And he's got a bunch of us telling him, hey, be careful with those fucking pills. They, you know, they creep up on you. And, you know, right now they're helping. If you don't, <laughs> well, he says they're not giving them, uh, un, you know, too many of them anyway. But still, those pills are, they. I think they work on your mind. Besides just the uh, the relief from the pain, there's got to be more to all this. And I've been gone a long, long time from the States. And I've heard nothing but horror stories about Rockefeller or medicine to this day. But I'm not considering Java Doctor being a, like a victim of anything. That was a surgery. You know? Trauma and surgery I don't consider part of the Rockefeller medicine game. But they work it into it. <laughs> so I think Java's been around the block enough to know what he's doing. So he knows how things are going. He's handling it pretty good. And and then his wife has a, a leg problem. Yeah, I pay attention to you people when you chatter on the reallibertymedia.com. Anyway, but yeah, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And well, let's see, Moose got, uh, she got, the spring came, so now she's got a big melt. She said four feet of soup, you know, what do, would she call it? Um, it's like melting ice i suppose it just to me it seems like soup <laughs> I, I can't imagine living in anything like that but she survived the worst the worst winter in minnesota <clears throat> i mean wisconsin wow boy did i fucked that one up anyway same thing wisconsin minnesota's right next door to each other just don't call the people from one state by the wrong name then you got into the problems because, you know, how united Americans are. We're united until you say we're from the wrong state. Or, hey, you know what? I don't really think it matters, but everybody else thinks it matters. So <laughs> I got to pretend sometimes like it matters. But I really don't care. I don't. I, all this drama, 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 drama we live in. Show me your papers. And who are you showing your papers to? Somebody that's your intellectual inferior. It's obvious, too, by the way. Their demeanor is just deplorable. And some of them are downright rude. I mean, what? I think there's like a personality disorder test that they give the cops to see if they'll fit in. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a fan of anything public anyway. Police, oh, what a joke they are! Jeez, they're afraid. I think it was Grimner was saying about that. That uh, they're always in a state of fear, so they shoot you. I thought that was a joke, and then I saw some links Rob Works put up a few months. And I've seen them over the time, but a few months ago, I went wow. What the hell I got to see? I don't look anymore. I think the last cop link I actually sat down to watch was uh, somewhere Tennessee, Kentucky, somewhere in that area. The, the state troopers were chasing a guy in a pickup truck. And he wouldn't stop. And his uh, crime on the radio was he had either a suspended license or they suspected he had no driver's license. And it wasn't a big, fast, driving over everybody chase. It was just running from him in a beat-up old truck. Anyway, they shot him dead. The police. For uh, not stopping, I guess. 
<laughs> what do you call that? How in the hell have we been taught that is, uh, that's okay. That's what really gets me is, you know, it's one thing to run from the law. I understand it's not the smartest behavior and, you know, there is. But what justifies that if you run that they don't just at some point leave you go? You know, why make things unrepairable? Why not just cut your losses? But <laughs> that's not how they do shit. Over the course of time, a lot of people have been in, injured in police chases that weren't even in, in the police chase. They were, like, sitting on a bus stop, waiting for the bus, and all of a sudden, <laughs> cops come and run them over because they couldn't control the car and they hit them. But... You know, that's uh, in pursuit of a suspect time for the police. I guess they kind of get their rocks off doing that shit. You know, or they'd have a better way. They got all these fucking drones. Why don't they just put a drone on you and follow you until you run out of gas and then send somebody to play with you? I don't understand all this running and chasing after and evading and i'm gonna do this and you're gonna i'm just too sm you know too smart michael i'm too smart for <laughs> i understand the results but i i don't really understand how we got there except from watching television i suppose i've come up with a, a theory <laughs> conspiracy theory <laughs> oh yeah Let's see. Whenever you're going to say public, replace that with government. Well, to me, it's the same thing. Government. I don't. I'm not too much of a a public lover in the first place. Public meh. commerce isn't so bad, but you know, like uh, the stuff Moose does, going to festivals. Oi, no, 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 no. The last concert I went to, I I didn't want to go to either. Now, if I told you who I went to go see, I'm sure Miss Marion Grimm would go, well, wow, how could you go there and not like it? I don't know. Just that's me. Some Something about live music when uh, it's real popular and the band that did it gets up there on stage to play it. The live thing just doesn't do it for me like that with 5,000, 10,000 people around. Ooh, it's too much. So, I'm a minority of one. And I know I went and saw, who is that? Rob Zombie and uh, some other big old time band. But there was like three or four bands. and Zombie came on last. And by the time I was ready to go before he ever came on. And I'm, I like Rob Zombie. I like his movies better than his music. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not, like, anti-anybody. I just don't care to see them live. I'm, like, the only person that ever says that. Eh, guess who just returned from the cold? The wife is back to save me from myself. So, I don't know. Where are we at in a perfect world? In a perfect one, 20% off. I was thinking about what me and Vinny were talking about the other night. Got conf completely confused here. I should probably hit a pipe load and try to straighten out my mind because I'm all over the road. Can't stay concentrated on one idea at a time. Ah, that speak. Hey, I'm seeing anti. Uh, he's been threatening to uh, do some more radio. But he's been having time problems, you know, getting the time to do it when things are right and whatnot. And everything's available and all this stuff is working and it's just not working out for him. But when he does, I want to hear it because I have that kind of strange taste. I like to hear unusual things. But I'm more like this, the radio, than the uh, live people and crowds and I'll just bug the shit out of me. I, maybe it's the horror stories from all the big time bands that did stuff, concerts and whatnot. And some idiots opened a door that shouldn't have never been touched at a time they shouldn't have touched it, and people get trampled in the onslaught. 
<laughs> I can't be anti. Anti is anti. Don't you know? Yeah, I know. But I could be against things if I want to be. Huh? 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 Don't have to. Well, maybe the RLM is the one mold that I fit in. Ooh, what a thought that is. But there's more people on the RLM that uh, that I agree with and get along with than there are that aren't. <laughs> so it's a it's an interesting experience this electronic world i can't get over it must be cuz i'm so old and i'm stalling here while i roll me a cigarette for the tv and radio entertainment i got the tv going on in the background when cirque left um the cat well she leaves but the cat sticks around and i don't I think the cat is used to having the house completely silent with me sitting here and then just talking to myself. So I put the TV on to calm the cat down a little bit. And I think it works. He's He's been real good and real healthy, bopping around like a young kitten again. And uh, things are, <laughs> in the animal world here, things are real good. Hannah's good. And the doctor's good. I don't, I don't think I got anything to really complain about. What would I complain about? Uh, the ignorance of my fellows. Uh, good Lord. The shit that we believe because we were taught by an entity. You know, oh, I'm education and this is the truth. Well, man, all the things that I found out later on in life to be true, I didn't learn them in school. Oh. Uh. And I've been catching up on some more of this, uh, the Tesla Trump um, thing, tie that there is. Because Trump had an uh, an uncle, uncle, what was his name? John Trump, I think. And apparently he was, and the further I listen into this story, the more I find out, he was actually the last person to have access, him and another guy, I forgot the other guy's name too, Ah, uh, she wrote it down. But there's a few people involved in this. And they had uh, 45 trunks of Tesla papers. And they just vanished. Boom, gone. Well, where'd they go? We don't know. Just like the $21 trillion. Where'd it go? I don't know. It's not there. You're using the wrong screen, sport. Anyway. So he was... Trump was... Uh, he was involved at some level in academia and physics. But the things that started to surface after these papers that never existed were never found seemed to be coming from him and people that were close to him, these new discoveries and such. So, there, yeah, like usual, there's so much more than we're ever told. Uh, geez, I remember being taught that, uh, what was it, Marconi. Marconi invented the radio. And that's not the case at all. The case is, what the truth came out to be was, Marconi was a student of Tesla's at some period in time. And uh, Marconi ended up with the radio project, but it was something that Tesla had already done. And he ends up taking credit for it. Now, I read there was a Supreme Court ruling. I don't know where I read it. Legal schmiegel. I could take it or leave it. But apparently, even the court decided, yeah, Marconi stole it from Tesla in 1948. Well, then will you tell me why in 1968 I'm learning that Marconi invented the radio in school? See, it's things like this. You know, when you have the, the story... And then you have this other story. Now, the other story makes more sense than the first story. So the intelligent person would, hmm, why, it looks like I've been deceived here. I must have been wrong all this time. Let me take a look at this new information. <sighs> well, kids and kidettes out there in 20% off land, that's not how it works. 
it's why well, thinking for yourself gets you to nothing but ridicule and uh, hassles hassles from dumbasses in the world that love to you know just rattle their teeth say absolutely nothing for no reason just to be involved well i mean toilet humor is kind of cool it's got its place but not maybe not as the first thing you say when you get on the rlm <laughs> maybe maybe not to me i'm not so happy with that shit but other people yeah and that's what makes the world go round that's why i'm 20 percent off and you're 80 percent off <laughs> I was only kidding. Marco Polo. What? I'm reading the chat out loud again. Whoops. Well, if I can... Uh... <coughs> Whoa! Anyway, <coughs> that was a little better than I thought it was. And we've got stuff happening in the house. Little little activity going on here, too, during the 20% off broadcast tonight. And I don't know. I don't know what I'm more angry about tonight is the deal with the, the misrepresentation about why they want to go in into Venezuela in the first place. And I've mentioned it, but I don't hear anybody with any feedback on it. And what it boils down to, the overall scheme. Take away all the politicians out, th out, they're gone. It's about oil. And it's, the Koch brothers have this oil refinery. It's probably in Texas. I can't think of any. There's not a lot of refineries left in the States. This particular refinery, what it handles is the sludgy, crappy, cheapest garbage oil that you can get. And I told you, uh, what happened is the guy that's in power now put a premium on the shit oil because they, he was getting wise to Koch. So Koch got pissed off and said, Trump, get in there and fix this. And they've been trying. And it, I don't know. It's probably 50-50 right now. Because the public, what difference does it make what we know or what we don't know? They're going to do what they're going to do, and they're going to call it what they want to call it. So far to date, the United States has been involved directly, and this is according to the United Nations. 67 countries have had a coup d'etat backed by the United States and militarily helped or led by. So, nah, this ain't going to... This ain't going to end until everybody's uh, all, what, global, I guess. What are they going to do with us all? How are they going to possibly enforce this idiotic crap that they're talking about? Uh, I don't know. I guess if you keep buying, uh, you know, all the big stuff and the new cars and all that, get yourself into that good debt trap that's how they do it to us because we need the shit that they've got but the shit that they got ain't worth buying <laughs> I don't know <coughs> I'm not saying I, I don't I don't get a lot of uh, argument about it but the way that I represent the second rate shit we have available to us people don't like that i got it and well then he was on me yesterday about it he doesn't like that and i asked him well what what am i saying that's wrong we get shitty water we get shitty electricity we get shitty food there you go i mean if you're not wealthy and any even if you are wealthy <laughs> What difference does it make? They're sharing the same freaking air we're breathing. They're looking in at life way differently than us. We look at it 
daily and we have our little goals. They look at it 20 year blocks and hey, what, we'll need, rename this country this and we'll put the Jews in Israel and put them right in the Middle East and then we'll see what happens. But people don't believe that. They think I'm crazy. Well, if I'm the one that's crazy, why are there 7 million Jews in the Middle East running the whole fucking planet? And there's even laws, anti-Semite, wow. So if you tell the truth about me, I can go, hey, you're an anti-Semite. What? (laughs) No, nobody ever does that. Because the reality of it is not the individual that makes a fucking difference anyway. It's the group behind that individual. Those are the fuckers you got to worry about. And they've called them... Enforcement for many years. There used to be all kinds of nice, soft names for them. And now all it is is, wow, do this or else. Everybody's going to do it or else. Or else what? Well, or else you'll find out (laughs) there's different rules for different levels of finance. You'll see. Just try to stay alive in the meantime. It's all good. Mm. Venezuela saying hello to Bob and Boob. Good for you, Vinny. Oh, and Grimner says, fuck Trump and Israel. Well, I don't want to try that. That'd be one nasty week in bed, wouldn't it? (laughs) Never mind. Uh. Uh, wait, why are you talking about my dog, Hannah? Hmm. Uh, the wife brought the elixir to save me. She knows. Um, and then, then uh, she doesn't get along with the cat like I do, and I'm doing the radio. Hey, you want to do the radio? I'll take care of the cat. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, she got on here the, uh, on wire once and she wanted to say hello to anti i remember that because she was coming home from work and you were on the thing and she says hello in her little danish voice and all that was kind of cool that's what i mean about you know when you actually talk to somebody and you hear their voice there's that sense of reality that separates us from the typey you know typing 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 yeah 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 it's cool i can see i read your type yeah 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 Okay, but something about hearing a human voice or even a link, watching something on a, or a picture, I find that, uh, I don't think it's that personal. Well, maybe some people really do. They're so important in the world that, you know, where they are and who they are must be a secret kept from everybody for the good of mankind. And then there's people like me that don't give a shit about anything, so who gives a fuck? But, that doesn't mean you don't follow the rules, crying out loud. If you haven't heard Moose Moose say it over the years, then you ain't been listening. And she's a good uh, society person. She gets along fine in society. I was chatting with her the other morning, and she was coming up with ideas. I might want to do something different, you know. Uh, The kids are grown now. Now she's got a dog. And it's not the same when you have a dog as when you have kids. Kids are way more trouble. And uh, (laughs) I think she's starting to look at other ideas for, you know, something to do with her her time in the future. I don't know know what to tell anybody. I, I I know how to ask questions, but sometimes the questions that I ask don't seem like questions to the person reading it. And then I like to interject my uh, my own personal input. Like when I did, I, I did something with incense at uh, about ninety nine two thousand, right in there. And I was working with this adult company based out of Las Vegas. And I could have sold the idea to the company to carry on the product uh, under the labels that I had designed and all that. And But what I, in, instead of what I did is just told Renee, yeah, just go ahead and, and this is, 
here's the originals and these are the colors do it yourself it's not that big of a deal these are all the suppliers for the bags and the incense and i just gave it to her but it could have sold it to her because it was a business but see being like that with people in my life in the past brought me where i'm at now but the things that i learned about I, uh, I've i told this story on the dork table, I think once in the few years I've been on here. But my wife and I, when I was married in Cal um, North Carolina, or what, Tennessee, I couldn't remember what state I was in, uh, about 1993, I have this little child, and we're having money trouble. So she says, if you loan me $150, I can start my own home business. I went. For $150, where are you going to start? You ain't going to do anything. Go through that a weekend. Anyway, she says to me, I'm going to do home parties selling dildos and lingerie and lotions. And I thought, okay, well, I what do I have to do? Nothing. You just put the money up in it, and I'll do everything else. Well, what happened was... The people that she was working for, I'd answer the phone they'd be looking for, and I'd end up talking for her because I knew what was going on with the business because I'm uh, paying attention. <laughs> anyway, they end up asking me if I knew anybody that would be interested in doing this, that, and the other, and I said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so I started working with them on a different level of business than uh sales i was more in in designing and advertising and what it started me into was buying in quantities and there was so much stuff to buy that and i had a, a small budget to work on i wasn't doing you know i'm not a rich guy but the fun this just such a sick story to tell on the radio in the long run but they have this lube rication called anal ease for sex and on the labeling what i saw in the advertisement it said it has the highest amount of some kind of a benzocaine or something legal within the legal limits and i started to ask questions about labeling and what i find out is you can write anything you want on the label if you own the product the product is the product. If the label, that's, you can label over something that's already labeled if you want to. There's nothing illegal about it because the first, the first seller already got paid. So they're, they're not involved anymore. It's a past tense thing. So, <laughs> so what I figured out was to rename the thing something that wasn't so bold and, and ridiculous. And, not only did I sell it to, uh, well, she sold it to her customers, but we were actually selling it to people that had kids with teething problems or the kids would come into the house that got bit by something, put a little dab of this crap on their little bug bite and they'd stop crying. Go, wow, man, everybody's got to find out about this. And that's just one example of tripping over something and rewriting the information a little bit and reselling it well that's life that's what we do we do it all the fucking time in business now the regular guy i don't know what you do but laws change they might have caught on to that this is way back in the 90s things weren't so internet-y you know it wasn't instant everything it took a while to get things done and it, People relied on things like phone calls and letters. And then the internet came along. And I got, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think much of the internet as far as doing business on it from the minute I saw it. And I still don't to this day. I do not want to do any business with anybody on the internet. But I do things like radio or play games but as far as like a transaction thing no 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 keep that stuff see i think for me the success to life is 
knowing the people that you do commerce with, being friendly with them and knowing their face. But, you know, when you're in an anonymous world and you're, you're buying this and you're buying that, but you don't even know who you're buying it from, that, see, that's the, that's a part of character I was raised with that the generations after me, nah, they want instant everything. Give it, give it to me quick. Of course, that's how you end up with somebody figuring out a way to sell butt juice to people to use on their kids to make them feel better when they hurt. <laughs> but, you know. The world that we live in, this is what I mean. Instead of that already being promoted for, hey, this will help your kids. When kids scrape themselves and they get bitten and they got teeth coming in, we'll give them a little bit of this. No, 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 no. That's not what they got. They go, take them to the doctor. And <laughs> wow, you ever see a kid that wasn't just not happy about having to go see a doctor? Because I remember at least seeing it in the movies. I'm going to get a shot. No, I don't want to get no shot. And then they got this guy, and he's all calm and nice and the kid. And, and then he convinces the kid to take the shot, see? And they didn't convince me to take the shot. No, 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 no. If anybody's going to be shooting anything into me, guess who it's going to be? It's going to be me. And... No, I'm a little too old for all that. I mean, crying out loud, when I was young, things were different. I was a different world. But now, crying out loud, let's see, 59 shooting some heroin on a Friday night with my trusty wife and dog and cat. Are you out of your fucking mind? Out so insane. But, got to understand the comic value of that because I get accused of being... A drug-addled hippie. I smoke marijuana. Now, I don't even smoke marijuana. I smoke cannabis. But my wife says I'm a drug-addled hippie. See, there you go. Well, if how more obvious could it be than that? That she's just jumping on the pile, having a giggle at me. I'm the punching bag of the world. Everybody wants to take a shot. Line up. But I will enjoy the elixir. So, successful war, huh, Vinny? Oh, well, oh well, he's doing his definitions and such on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Well, I reminisce about the most insane crap I can think of. 20% off, because you know what? I'm only 20% off. How off are you? <laughs> It's not a contest. Don't get your knickers in a twist. And I'm still pushing Miss Mary to do that on RLO. Hey, we should take a little a little time to promote the other progress promotional things going on. Uh, we got freedomsnetwork.org. We've got realliberty.org. And then there's other stuff that, like, I like Minds. Minds isn't very, um, it's not personal. Very impersonal. It's like Facebook without all the bullshit. Uh, there's a lot of good information and there's a lot of shit that you go, wow. Boy, I wish I didn't see that. <laughs> but it's a little late at this point. Uh, because, you know, just like I keep harping on, there's equal amounts of people that love Donald J. Trump. Boy, they want to be his personal ball washer. I'm telling you. And then there's an equal amount of people that would like to see Donald J. Trump's ball washer wash his balls, you know, with a jigsaw or maybe a drill, something horrible. And, you know, both extremes, love and hate. But you got to remember something about this. The hate frequency, it's called fear, is a very narrow and very small. You can't get very much into it. And the love frequency is a very wide and you can feel it full of stuff. But people seem to choose the fear one anyway. And when you 
when you get like I uh, get on the radio and let you know I'm to fear what's there to fear uh we already know everything's bad and poisoning us time's killing us the prices are going up freedom's going down the stock exchange is going to collapse the end of the world and here we are we're still okay how many years have i been hearing this is the end of the world i, mean, I think i was like 11 when i first heard it and went ah oh, the end of the world what what's going to end the world <laughs> nothing you you're the one that gets ended that's I think that's what I finally figured out because a couple of years ago I had some parents and now I don't. Now, I still got the parents. They're just not here. You know, it's very strange how life is, you know, when you uh, you hit a certain age and you, the older you get, the fewer people that were with you in the beginning survive to where you are now. I've outlived an incredible amount of people in my life that were friends of mine, you know, during the earlier points, mostly through the 20s and the 30s, and I started to settle down in my 40s, but yeah, I've I've had a few friends uh, do the suicide thing, you know, where no warning, this, this wasn't... Uh, this wasn't these drama queens looking for somebody to fix them. These people were finished living and they decided to take off. And they didn't tell anybody. They just left. And they went, bye-bye. But, see, they still live in my head. So, it's not much different than being uh, long distance apart. If I didn't have the internet, all I would have is my memories. So, I don't know. Is any <laughs> here we go with all this, you know, that philosophical crap I get into when circs are at work and I watch all these other links that I don't watch and, and listen to and talk about on the real liberty media. This is way different. It's another side of me that I keep private to myself and I get into these strange people with really socially strange ideas and their delivery is strange, but the the part that I like about this one guy I've been listening to lately, and it's not new, it's old stuff I tripped over on YouTube, is he he says, hey, you liked it, you don't like it, okay, whatever, you know, but if you do, throw a few bucks in so I can buy my, you know, buy me a pizza. He's not in it for the money. He just does that. It's like, yeah, you do it, you don't. You you see the link. You, if you can prove me wrong, let me know. Just like Larry Woods. That is why Larry is so impressive. Because he'll listen to you. Hey, show me where I'm wrong, and I will gladly let take a look at that and adjust my error. But so few people want to do that because I think it's embarrassing to be wrong. I don't know why. I mean, if you are... You're wrong because of a misjudgment or misinformation. So if somebody gives you a correct answer, you're just moving a step up the wrong. You're not losing shit. Of course, your ego goes, hey, wait a minute. I couldn't have been wrong all these years. Yeah, you could. And there's probably tons of shit I'm wrong about. But like the Internet, there's lots of stuff I'm right about, too. It just matters what time of day it is. I think we're all right when we're asleep. When we're awake and we do all this chitter-chatter crap and have ideas and know stuff and can prove shit, that's when it all falls apart. And it falls apart because everything that we use to do this stuff is all crap. <sighs> There's no other way for me to explain that. Maybe I'd find a more entertaining way to say, wow... This is really not good. <laughs> oh, uh, Donna Van Meter is a I love Larry Woods fan. Good. Larry's stuff is great. I would recommend it to anybody, but I don't do Facebook. I don't do all that popular stuff that you need to do to be heard. <laughs> I got a small small group of people, you know. 
and I'm not going to teach anybody on this uh, 20% off nothing. If you don't know it already, you're probably not here. This is this isn't for people that are on medication and they need therapy and they want to hold on to their blanket while you say pretty words to them. No, 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 no. This is the radio where you get what I think, no matter if it's right or wrong. It doesn't matter. It's what I think. Got nothing to do with you. Just kind of entertaining, you know, if you, when you think about it. And some people that I don't agree with, they entertain me occasionally, and sometimes they don't, and I kind of get a little pompous, but hey, hey, it's my rat. I've got rats on the inner world to do what I want. I think I'm going to be in charge. Ah, uh, Vinny is saying, I don't even remember how I got connected to Larry. Well, doesn't matter. But Larry knows. Larry knows stuff the rest of us need to know. I will say that. And he's an older guy than me. So, you know. Let that be your guide, too, is the older people are, the longer they survived. So, hmm, is it possible a 60-odd-year-old, 70-year-old man might know something? Then you go, well, what about Donald Trump? Well, Donald kind of proved himself long, long ago. So, Donald Trump doesn't fall into my category of older gentlemen that know something. Well, unless you want to be a thief, then I'd say go be like Donald Trump. He's fucking great. That guy could steal shit from anybody. And then when he leaves with it, you thank you for taking it, Mr. Trump. Oh, it was such a pleasure to have you steal my stuff. Bye. And, hey, another crazy idea, huh? 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 You watch. Oh. Mm. Uh. Yeah, Rob Works has done radio with Larry Works. With Larry Works. Larry Woods, too. I got tongue twisted in that one. <laughs> Rob Works, Larry Works. Anyway, yeah, because we've been around a while. We've, no, see, that's what I mean. We know all this incredible stuff. But where do the, where do people go? Where do they migrate to? They migrate to where they're, level of intellect will take them and most people don't see the internet as a tool to get out of the hole they're in because one most of them don't know they're in a hole and two if you got the internet how do you trip into this on accident i don't think i did i remember specifically seeing <laughs> uh i was on the facebook when i was in scotland for a few months. Anyway, I saw an ad on there for World Truth and went, eh, if you're looking for something different, try this. So I did. And then uh, after a while, I was arguing with some religion nutter about weed on uh, Facebook. And they gave me a 30-day timeout for my horrible behavior. And I said, well, how the fuck do I delete my account and never have to come back to your shitty side again? <laughs> and everybody else I know except for well not everybody else I know. that's not fair but a nine out of ten people have a freaking Facebook account something like that nine out of ten eight out of ten it's up there and they always say the same thing so I could keep track of my family because you know it's a huge family and they're all on it and it will there's your problem right there <laughs> Lose the uh, internet and <laughs> prove your life 100%. I'm saying that if your life is not how you want it to be, I would say the first thing you're doing wrong is you're on the internet. Because I find m a million ways to entertain, to entertain myself with this magic box and the, you know, the screen and all the crap you can do with it. It's a freaking wonderland. But if I had the internet and I was still pissing and moaning about how shitty life was, I'd lose the internet and go find something in, you know, in life that was do, you know, worth doing, good for me. Something that inspired me to 
be good and have a good time or whatever the fuck that's all about. But I sure as hell wouldn't continue to punish myself daily like that, the way I see it. Oh, life sucks. And oh, it's horrible. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, wow. What are you doing to yourself that hurts so bad? <laughs> what I, are you whipping yourself with one of those religious like switches? What do they call those things? You know, where the guy's loving God by beating his own back with a whip? I forget it. And seen it in some movie about monks or something. It's probably nonsense. Maybe not. Maybe there's people that are that crazy. I mean, crying out loud. Look at this shit that we do. I used to strap myself into a two-ton bomb, fill it full of gasoline, and drive 70, 75, 80 miles an hour, depending on my mood and certain time of age. You know, years went by when, oh, that's a little too fast. But still, you're driving down the freaking interstate in a bomb. And if you do anything stupid, you fuck up your bomb, you could get killed. It's terrible, but I did it for years and years and years. Now I look at it as total insanity because I survived it all. No plane crashes, no boat sank that I was ever on, uh, no car accidents, nothing. Just a, I haven't even been hit by, even hit by a train, nothing, not even lightning. I have the most boring, good Lord. So what did I do radio thinking about I've never seen anybody get killed, no bank robberies, just boring old me. Hmm. But along the way, though, I got to admit, I did meet some of the most uh, incredible people. The people that I met, some of them I can't remember names. Uh, and you know how I am with the RLM. Uh, you can get on the show. Vinny gets on here. I forget who he is. And you know how Vinny is with his name. Vinny doesn't let you forget his name. I can forget Vinny's name. That's how forgetful I am. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at this. Rob Works is bringing back Smoke and Mirrors podcast archive from the Real Liberty Media. Showing to uh, Don that he's done a radio with Larry, too. I think that's pretty damn good. I remember when you guys did all that stuff. Me and you and Larry and uh, I think it was Vince. Vinny did a show with us. There was all four of us. And we go back uh, a couple of years. This is back before uh, when Mary was doing the dark table with me on the Saturdays, regular. And then now Miss Mary's Farmer Mary. She doesn't have time for us little people on the radio no more. <laughs> She's progressed to another level of reality. And boy, is it changing her, too. She isn't the meek, mild little Miss Mary I met back at World Truth. Now she's like, <clears throat> Miss Mary. And that should explain it. And if it doesn't, then you probably don't know who I'm talking about. But she does the Rocket Chair podcast. I forget I'm not just talking to RLM on uh, Real Liberty Media Wednesday and Friday night. And she used to do the dork table with me. We'd take a break from all the links and all that stuff and politics. Just have a break. Tell bad stories and jokes. And she'd read her links and ignore me. And I'd be on some deep rant about something important. And she'd be talking about Lisa B's new haircut. The next, oh, it was just the funniest shit. And now she does, well, she's always done the Rocket Chair podcast, but she's cut down to an hour on Wednesday and Friday because of all the other things in her life. She got busy. And my time is still fairly, ah, well, it's not as free as I like to make it sound, I suppose, because, uh, I keep screwing up with all these time zone changes and misunderstanding what time it is to go get who, when, where, or not to get them. And little things like that, just, I don't know, details. I'm not really good on the details. I had to learn how to read a clock. That's got to be my biggest flaw. I don't know what it is. I can look at the damn thing, and then two seconds later, what time is it? I just looked at it. 
boom. It's time is not one of the things in my life that keeps my attention. I wonder what it what it is about time. I think time's all made up bullshit anyway. I don't know what purpose it serves. Uh, what do you use a clock for? Oh, to be on time to go to work. Well, yeah, that. Uh, okay. Uh, what other reason could you possibly need a clock to be somewhere for? Oh, I have to go to court for my traffic tickets. Uh, hmm. I feel a pattern is being set up before you people, all right, before your eyes. <laughs> you see me building it one little step at a time. Where am I going? <laughs> I'm going to Commerce Land. The land of $21 trillion in debt and counting. Just remember. <laughs> I don't know. Remember what? We're, we're living on promissory notes. We pass around IOUs, call it money. Use plastic cards to do the accounting, and it's all nonsense. It is, it's so huge and big that it can't be done properly at the scales of commerce they try to perform. It's insanity. It's gone way beyond crazy long ago. And still, I mean, say a company's in debt for a billion, <laughs> a billion dollars or... They miss, uh, like, say they, they thought a product would get them more revenue than it did. And they come up, oh, a billion dollars short. Hey, we'll make it up next year. <laughs> as, as all this imaginary debt just keeps going up behind everything else, I mean, besides your dollar or your kroner or your mark or your whatever the fuck you got. Behind it, you got a central bank just making the pile that you got to crawl up on top of higher and higher. You can't never get there because no matter where you're at, they add to it on top. So by the time you get to the top, where are you? Hoping the hell you don't fall off. That's where you're at. <laughs> I, 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 I've avoided putting myself in. See, the positions in life that other people hold, they hold them dear, and I think of them as traps to avoid. <laughs> it's never been a popular uh, a popular way to live, but it's been a lot of fun. I have had so many uh, outside-of-the-system experiences with people, you know, nothing documented. There was no con uh, contract to sign. It was two people, hey, I do this, and hey, you do that. Okay. And the level of honesty that I've carried through my life, I've always been given back. I've, I've never been a victim of finance. People don't, I don't know, maybe I just don't attract the right ones or something. But I've never found myself getting screwed out of what I've worked for. Uh, I've heard horror tales from other people, but never been through it myself, so I got no input on the negative side of finance. Damn, you'd think a bum like me would have all kinds of, oh, I had a million in 75, <sighs> but I blew it on heroin. <laughs> That'd make a good story, wouldn't it? I went through a million dollars in heroin. <laughs> I don't see how anybody could go through a million dollars in a lifetime, but unless they wanted to. You, there's no have to. But what there is is all this advertising and, and expectation from society what you should have and what you shouldn't have and what you should wear and what you should drink and what you should smoke what you shouldn't smoke how you should eat your this and how you should hold your fork and which hand to put your knife into <laughs> these things matter to people are you kidding me well I don't know when I Because when I think of how ridiculous shit like that is, it always takes me back to, we have people in the 21st century 
living in the street in in a metropolis where there's buildings there's no excuse for the uh, for the results except the results are the plan of the experiment that's happening <laughs> it can't be a byproduct of oops what were we thinking and no the so people had to know this was coming or it wouldn't be happening. They would have cleaned it up. And no, 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 we can't have this. Let's do something about it. But they don't. They encourage it by raising the prices to pay the interest on the debt. <laughs> and all the time here. <laughs> this is the beauty of this shit to the best part. But we have rich people flying all around the world eating off of gold plates and shit like that <laughs> but that's the results of capitalism by god and country those people worked hard to get where they're at <laughs> that fucking ditch digger and his ignorant ass fuck him <laughs> we used him we don't need him anymore we've got the ditch dug now <laughs> we used the other guy to cover it up now bye bye two of them get put them out there now, how in the fuck did we get here is what I'd like to know. If it wasn't a plan, it, there's no other way to explain it. You cannot fuck something up that badly and still have it function. It Just anywhere else in life besides actual life, would people accept the crap that we accept and go, oh yeah, that that's the way it should be i think those israelis are some really special people and they should take all that land away from those damn arabs <sighs> arabs in the middle east take their land and give it back to <laughs> get it get it <laughs> we got suckered again by that little group of people in the middle east how they do that i sure I'm sure glad I ain't again them as far as the foreskin and the nose go, but their politics suck. I'd hate to be like on the losing end of a fight with the damn Jews. These people are heartless. They shoot civilians, unarmed kids, civilian kids, and they don't give a fuck. And they stole the fucking land in the first place. But they had approval from government to do it. Oh, man. And here we are. 2019. You got a president goes over there and on camera kisses the wall with a Yamaha on his head like he's a freaking Jew. And, uh. That seems to make people happy that he is not against the Jews. Huh. Well, I would sure like to read the book called All the Good Things Israel Did for the World, Part 1. Because <laughs> the truth is, just like where I'm from, the good things that my country did... No, you can't tell anybody about those things. you got to lie about the things to even tell people about the things that the U.S. does. Because if you told them the truth, they'd go, Wow, you, you're a piece of shit, aren't you? You for that stuff? What are you, some kind of barbarian? What are you, sleep on a bed of nails? You Were you breastfed by a pit bull? What is your problem, warmonger boy? But no, you know what they do? They encourage us to fight with strangers about political crap that doesn't fucking hold any water. And religious ideas. To get land. And there's so much fucking land on this planet. And look at what they do. It's like a chess game. I see that. I'm sure there's a few other RLM people that see that. I see a few names that I think Vinny and Grimm and Van Meter was well, she took off uh, Miss Kate there's a few folks out there that you don't have to agree to understand what I say that's see there's another thing fuck all this agreeing shit what does it mean if you agree with something anyway I agree that the police are a bunch of shit but that doesn't stop there being a bunch of 
full of shit police. They're still there. So my holding an opinion about it doesn't change anything. But telling other people about it, the reason I do that is to the other people that have that same belief, it's not a popular belief. Vinny won't, Vinny doesn't share my belief the way I do. Vinny engages the police <laughs> and brags about it. He says, man, that cop finally said, can I go now? <laughs> You know, and I think that's pretty much how you would have to be to survive an encounter like that where the cop wants to get away from you and has no reason to shoot you on his way out. And Vinny's learned all those things over the years. He's even been to court, federal fucking court Vinny. I'm telling you, man, the guy's a celebrity in his own right in that. Bundy world. People know him, you know, and he's got a reputation in that Bundy trial thing where whew, if, if Vinny said so, yeah, he's the guy that doesn't lie. We know that. Now, that's my impression of this thing, and I've never seen anybody put yourself out so, you know, easily. Ha 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 ha. Because that's what he does. I don't have that gift. I'm re and I think on a camera I'd be a little reluctant. I don't know why. Because it's not, that's not the me. The talking, ah. I've been talking on microphones since I was a teenager. That, that's not new. But the camera thing. Hmm. And there's all kind. man, I go on a bit shoot. And there's so many people out there. And there's so much stuff that how do you pick i see you got to spend your time sifting through all this stuff to figure out who's telling you what <laughs> that you want to know and if you don't listen to your opposition every now and again then what are you opposing <laughs> so <laughs> i think i'm just gonna oppose every bit of it yeah go on hey i'm being nice um I'm giving you kind of a slap on the back for your uh, your involvement and the shit you do, because I couldn't do it. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't want the responsibility of doing it. I'm an irresponsible kind of guy. Oh man, just circus enough. Okay, all right, circus and the dog and the doctor and the house and you know the. Stuff that I do to keep things going around here. But I wanted all that. I don't know if I'd want the fight of opposing a freaking killing machine like the U.S. government. Because, man, you guys got so lucky. They have killed a lot of other people. And the reasons that they did it always got manipulated by the press. So the public never really understood the truth. They'd go through all these hocus-pocus religious crap stories to avoid. Nah, this was about some guns. Well, gun ownership in Texas and wanting to protect your home from an invading force, that would include the ATF and the FBI. Uh, the way I see guns, the way I saw people, I don't think that... Just because you're from the government, that that gives you any more right to come into my place with a rifle than anybody else. So what happened was when they attacked them, the people inside shot back. But they manipulated the damn film and the uh, the representation of what was going on, the standoff. And they showed the public what they wanted them to see. And then they've even made films about it that take the... The final decision to, to just level this place and burn it out, it came from Washington. But in this film they made, they make it look like it was rogue FBI and, and ATF agents that decided to do this against the government's wants. And I don't think so. I saw the films broken down and explained in detail. And I went, wow, because there's like, machine gun fire and tanks moving here and if you don't know what you're looking for 
you then you don't know what you're looking at in that case. For me, as I'm, I'm not a violent guy. I don't know much about you know war and bombing people and how you attack to get this result and where you got to put this bomb to get that to blow up. But they got these people that do this for a living and they broke down the filmage and they put it in the order that it happened in. And the stories that were being told through the press and the government were a little different than what was really happening. And the end, and there was even people that survived that crap. So, wow. Oh, there you go. Then you've got their story, your story, and what really happened. And no matter how many people see something, the more that see it, the more stories you get from it. So this clusterfuck was... I don't, I don't know if it was planned so much as it was like... I think they knew what they were doing every step of the way. But they weren't expecting to be exposed on the internet. And even though they were, it didn't matter. That's what pisses me off. Mm. Oh yeah, Vinny, I know you've been down to Waco. I was talking about the massacre though when it really happened. And the things that we were told were one thing and the things that happened were most of the time quite opposite or different at the very least. And oh, I never forget the cat. Man, the doctor runs this house. And since he's got his uh, life-changing operation, today, I wanted to play some poker tournaments. So I sat on my butt here on the computer, and the cat was on the chair right next to me. I must have played about four and a half, five hours solid. I uh, got up for tea on a break once. Anyway, oh. Uh, and the cat didn't move. He was, I, he's never done this the whole time we've sat here. I'll close the show out with a little Dr. Cooper talk. Make all you cat and dog lovers all jealous. Because I got me a good cat. <laughs> well, yeah, guns in every room and except the bathroom. Yeah, that was you when you got nailed. We got, see, we've got a bunch of celebrities on the reallibertymedia.com chat from the, you know, the living world, people that have experienced this government crap with their own eyes in their own homes or where they were at at the time and have seen it. And then there's people like me that know these other people. I don't have any um, personal experience with court or police or any of that crap. I've just been an onlooker and the crap that I've seen it leads me to believe, whoa, I'm sure glad I didn't have to deal with these idiots. They're dangerous because when I was growing and becoming a grown-up and an adult and all that crap, the uh, the crimes I was guilty of, driving without a license, ooh, top, I mean, top that, uh, that carried a ticket. That was the punishment for my big crime. So, hmm. Huh. I don't feel too bad about the whole thing, uh, but I don't know. By the way, things are being explained over the media. The world is a shithole that we should all just kill ourselves and just end it tonight and just don't even bother. But I don't think so. I think it's just a bunch of crap and they selectively pick off people and show it to you on the Internet so that you'll stay in, a, in that fear because if you ain't a fear to them, then that means that you're busy in the real world enjoying yourself. And I've tried to express that sentiment on the reallibertymedia.com chat in the radio for quite a period of time. I, it's hard to define to somebody else. You know, I'm just uh, the world isn't as bad as it as it uh, could be physically. But the stuff that they're feeding us now, that that's where I, I see the, all the problems and whatnot. Not with other people. People are just people. They're, they're not going to do nothing to nobody. But the things they could accomplish, no, nah, they're not interested in that. They want to just uh, be comfortable and, oh, not get in any trouble. What are those other standards of life? Uh uh, be counted. <laughs> I'm going to stand and be counted and part of the 
thing. No, you're not. It's just a story. Venezuela is no less a story to me here than L.A. or New York. It's places I've been, and as uh, this will get you guys thinking, <laughs> as physics will show you, it's not even there. Yeah, there you go. That's up to you. Now, if you're a curious person, there's plenty of information available <laughs> to show you all the ways we are both here and not here at the same exact time. Some people even prove time doesn't even exist. There's no such thing as time. Time is just man-made so they could keep track of you and figure out what you're worth. <laughs> And you want to solve all this shit, make everybody's job pay the damn same, period. <laughs> Watch prices drop overnight. And that has been 20% off on this 21st of March, 2019. And tomorrow night, we got Miss Mary coming on with the Rocket, <laughs> the Rocket Chair podcast. At, I think it's 7. I have tried to do her time verbally, and I always do it wrong. Vinny usually does it for me. And then after Miss Mary, you have Grimner and Moose Girl, unless she's gone on a, a festival or maybe a concert. She'll be there for the Freakers Ball, 11 o'clock East Coast. Huh, huh, huh? How's that? And then you lucky people. I'm going to try to hijack Miss Mary again and Vinny. We did a dark table together, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, just that loose, hey, how's it been? What's going on? How do you feel about this kind of show, the dark table? Then Sunday, we got in the morning. Well, my morning. Well, no, whose morning is it? I think it's their morning. Because when he comes on with the blues, it's already our afternoon. <laughs> we're six out seven hours eight hours ahead everybody out here and he plays the blues into the trivia game we play trivia and then hal anthony comes on about three o'clock on the west coast in america with behind the woodshed hey benny no problem uh, sometimes i give you grief because you give me grief and some tonight i don't know You've done a lot of stuff that I wouldn't even think of doing, but I am willing to tell other people, hey, I know somebody that was there and did it. So, hey, top that. Cha-cha-cha-cha. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting... Oh, hey, thank you, Grim. I didn't think of doing that. Then uh, Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, we got Grim Leftovers with Grim Near. And then Tuesday... I don't know. I might be alone. I might not. Who is to know? In a perfect world, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, if I can get my shit together. And then again, Grammy's Rocket Chair with Graham Z, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then Thursday, supposed to be 2 p.m. Eastern, but I screwed that up this week somehow with this time zone change crap. Wah, wah, wah. 20% off with me flash and uh that'll do it and i would like to say thanks to uh people at the real liberty media tonight grimner and Vinny and donna and rob works and on and on read the names in the beginning but you guys were all chatty at the end it was good to see and uh that's why i do this stuff you know i like to have a good time but i also like to let people know the horrible truth and the horrible truth is well we all know it's kind of horrible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that was enough from me. See you later.